Welcome friends to another r slash am I the jerk here video. As always, we've got some crazy stories like a husband not wanting their wife to send their daughter all the way across the world to Vietnam on their own. But first, we've got to answer this one by support is welcome. Am I the jerk for not giving up my seat in the bus to a pregnant woman and then showing my scars on my knee to show that I have an injury? A couple of months ago, I, 18-year-old female, got into an accident where I was walking across the road and got hit by a car that was way over the speed limit. My right knee and leg basically took most of the impact. The car stopped and called an ambulance and left a phone number, and we later on settled it and I got quite a big sum of money, with the help of my parents. A bone in my leg was broken and my kneecap was basically fractured. Fast forward to now, my leg's been fine as long as I'm not walking for too long, but my knee still hurts quite a bit, which results in me walking with a cane at 18 years old. I'm a bit embarrassed by it, but I can't do much about it so I just deal with it. Yesterday after school, I got on the bus to go home. My knee had been bothering me all day and I was happy to go home. Once I got on the bus, I took a seat as one does. A couple stops later, a pregnant woman entered and she looked around to see if there was a spot for her to sit, which there wasn't. I was one of the younger people, probably not the youngest though, on the bus. And therefore, she decided that I was the perfect candidate to give up my seat. So she walked over and basically told me that I had to get up so she could sit down. She didn't ask me, she told me. So I tried to explain in a soft voice, to not attract too much attention since I have social anxiety, that I have a knee injury and that it's hard for me to keep my balance on the bus while standing and that it was hurting a lot. Well, this woman started yelling at me, saying that I was just making excuses and that she didn't believe me. So I lifted up the dress I was wearing to my knee and showed her the scars. I admit that my scars don't look exactly pretty or nicely healed or anything but I had no interest in continuing this discussion. I made sure that there were no little kids watching when I lifted up the dress. The woman didn't know what to say, and she just kept on sulking and went to someone else to get them to give up their seat. I thought that was that, but suddenly a person behind me found it necessary to weigh in on the situation by saying that I was way out of line by showing her my scars, and that I embarrassed the woman, and that I could have easily stood up and just sucked it up for the remainder of my route. So, am I the jerk? Would you guys agree with me when I say that OP is clearly not the jerk here? They had a very legitimate reason for wanting to stay seated, they'd been suffering already all day. I feel for the pregnant woman, but like, first of all, it's not actually OP's responsibility to give up said seat regardless, but also they had a very legitimate reason. Do you guys agree that OP's definitely not at fault here and that honestly, they should just forget about this and not let this bother them at all? Let me know if you agree down in the comments below. Our next story is by Tired Throwaway 55654 Am I the jerk for sitting on a man's hand after he refused to move it from the empty seat? So I, female, 30, am 8 months pregnant. I take public transport to work daily. I'm always exhausted because I have to work extra time to be able to afford basic necessities. I take the bus to work every day and oftentimes it's packed, but I get lucky enough when decent folks volunteer their seats for me. Now I should mention that I don't use my pregnancy as an excuse to get what I want, but people just offer me their places by themselves which is kind and sweet. Wednesday I get on the bus like usual, but this time there's one empty seat. I go to sit, but I find a guy in his business attire sitting there with his hand on the empty seat, sort of like resting it. I say excuse me and ask him to remove his hand so I could sit, but he tells me the seat was taken. I ask by who, and he says his hand. Not gonna lie, I laughed a little, but wasn't feeling well, so I ask him to remove it so I could sit, but he refuses again. Folks start staring, I tell them I'm tired and needed to sit and he replies saying that my pregnancy isn't his problem. I had enough at this point. My legs were burning and my back was hurting, so I go ahead and sit on his hand. He freaks out and tries to remove it quickly while shouting at me. He then starts arguing about how disrespectful I was to do this inappropriate thing and in public no less. I argue back, not gonna lie, but then he gets off after saying I was being inappropriate and disrespectful. Everyone stares at me and I just sit there feeling a bit of shame about what happened. I tell my husband about this incident and he what the freaked the entire time. 
then says I did indeed act appropriately and shouldn't have made this guy feel uncomfortable by sitting on his hand like that. He tells me I screwed up and this was totally inappropriate despite me saying I was so tired of standing and was in desperate need to sit down. Am I the jerk? This is actually really interesting how related the first and second stories here are. That said, I think OP's definitely not the jerk. If there is a legitimate open and empty seat, some dude in your business suit doesn't get to just pick and choose. Public transport is public transport. And I think it's especially disgusting for that guy to go and try and reserve a seat, trying to sit alone, from a pregnant woman no less. This next story is by Late Adhesiveness 859 Am I the jerk for not removing a tree from my property as my new neighbor demands? I live in my late grandparents' home. I've spent the last few years modernizing it and making it fit my style. There's one thing I've not touched, however, and that's the apple tree in the back garden. My grandparents planted it on the day they moved into the house, and it came from my grandfather's family orchard as a sapling, a way of bringing a bit of his family with them. I love the tree, and some of my favorite memories as a child are picking fruit from it or climbing it when I was little. The new neighbors recently moved in next door, and they keep complaining about the tree wanting it cut down as it's casting shade into their garden where they want to put a hot tub. None of the tree overhangs onto their property at all, it just sadly cuts off light in that one specific area. I have apologized but told them I won't be cutting it down and suggested they put their hot tub somewhere else in the garden as it's a big space. I'd even planned to try and smooth things over when it grows fruit this year by bringing them a bag of fresh apples. They're pissed off at me and complaining about how it's just a tree and not a big deal to cut it down. The husband's also been threatening to get lawyers involved to force me to cut it down. I'll admit that it pissed me off and killed any goodwill I had towards them or desire to smooth things over. I've told them to do whatever the freak they want, but warned them I've got a camera in my back garden, so if they mess with my tree, I'll know. I set this up a few years ago due to local kids stealing all the apples. I don't mind giving apples away to people as it grows plenty, but I have an issue with people helping themselves. I know it's just a tree and it's perhaps silly to be so enraged by their demands and threats, but it has sentimental value to me. Is it really that unreasonable for me to not care that it casts some shade into their garden? First of all, they better not mess with that tree. It might sound funny, but tree law is a very serious thing. If those neighbors were to do anything to that tree, there would be legitimate penalties you could get against them. And depending on where you live, you might even need special permission or might not be able to get any permission at all to remove or cut down a fruit tree. Overall though, it's on your property, not overhanging. It's been there well longer than that person's lived in that house. OP's not the jerk and they don't have to worry about this, as long as the neighbors don't try to go and pull something. Our next story is from Unsure Dads. Am I the jerk for not letting ex's husband meet our infant son after she passed away? I, 29-year-old male, met my ex, Tanya, over a year ago. Supposedly, she was in an open marriage, but seems that was a lie once her husband, Mike, found out. We broke up, then they tried to work on their marriage and counseling. She got pregnant. I know they were hoping the baby was Mike's, but after having a paternity test done, we found out my son was mine. Tanya decided she couldn't be a part of the baby's life. Mike just didn't want anything to do with the baby, so she was scared if she'd stay involved, it would damage their marriage more. After my son was born, we worked with an attorney to ensure I'd have both physical and legal sole custody. She signed off on all of this, and that was that. Eight months later, Tanya passed away two months ago from an aneurysm from what I'm told. Now Mike and a few of her family, her mom and her aunt, are making contact because they want to meet my son. They didn't have an interest back then because they wanted to rug sweep the whole thing. Because I told them no, they've tried reaching out through mutual friends, people Tanya and I were in the same friend group with. Everyone's sympathetic for Mike because he just lost his wife and wants to meet the last piece she left behind, my son. While I get that, he's nothing to my son and I don't know how I feel about a grieving man who's probably not in the right mental space having access to my child a child that was a result of an affair in his marriage. With her family, I was considering allowing it, but because they started pushing that Mike be allowed to see him too, that changed my mind. There's so much uncertainty about letting these people in my life, so for me it's hard to even want to open that door. 
Everyone says I'm being too paranoid and insensitive to people who are grieving a painful loss, plus that it's only one meeting that would do no harm. As his father, it's my decision at the end of the day, I know, but because this family's going through a hard time, I don't know if that would make me the jerk. This is a really tough situation. I think OP's not the jerk whatever they decide upon, because I feel like their reasoning is very, very legitimate. I don't know what would actually be the right thing to do or not, but whether OP does or doesn't, I think they're not the jerk, and I think they did the right thing as the sole parent and the one person that's always looked out for this kid. If you're enjoying these hard-hitting questions, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below so you'll never miss any of my daily uploads. You won't want to miss being able to help in answering questions like our next one by Pretty Internet 142 Am I the jerk for not showing my ex proof that he wasn't my child's father until after he gave me his house? Okay, I know the title makes me look bad, but read the story for context first. I, 27-year-old female, used to be in a long-term relationship with Tom, 34-year-old male. We dated for two years before I moved into his house and agreed that I would pay for utilities while he covered the mortgage and taxes. After being together for four years, I discovered that he was cheating on me when I walked in on him and the other woman after coming home from an out-of-town trip early. I was understandably angry, yelled at the both of them, and tearfully packed up some things and stayed at a friend's house for a week. When I came back, the locks were changed and Tom had blocked me on everything. It took a court order to get me back in and by then he'd already sold or thrown away a lot of my things to appease his new girlfriend, and he knew that I didn't have enough money to fight him in court for all of it. I was in a really low place, and to make myself feel better, I ended up having a one night stand with a friend. Clark, 28-year-old male, and ended up pregnant. I was already officially out of Tom's house when I found out and we were in zero contact. So I decided to test Clark first and he was the father. Since Clark was the father, I didn't see the point in telling Tom that I was pregnant and just started planning my life accordingly. Clark also inherited a nice house and insisted I live there to make things easier on my finances as well as give us both equal access to our child. While I was out baby shopping, I ran into Tom's sister. She was completely surprised at how visibly pregnant I was. I made a quick excuse to leave with a vague and fake promise that I'd be in contact later. It was really just an awkward way to get out of an uncomfortable situation politely. A few days later, my phone was blowing up calls and texts from Tom asking me about the baby. I ignored them, but then he showed up at my parents' home demanding to speak to me. Tom was convinced that I was pregnant with his kid and was going to blindside him with a court order for child support after the baby was born out of spite. It would also align with his planned promotion and he didn't want to be perceived as a deadbeat parent. The company he works at is big on morality. I told Tom to leave me and my family alone, but he wanted me to sign an NDA about anything that would happen between us in family court to protect his reputation. I told him that he wasn't the father, but he thought that I was lying now to blindside him later and offered me his house. He was going to get a new one to pay for my silence. I agreed and when he was fully moved out, I mailed him the test results when Clark was tested. Tom now thinks I was being a manipulative witch, but it wasn't my fault he didn't believe me when I initially said he wasn't the father. So am I the jerk? I want to say OP is not the jerk, but taking a whole house when you know that like he's freaking out over this and worried about his future and it's really nothing like that at all is kind of a lot, but also the guy was pretty scummy, but it's also an entire house. Considering the guy went and evicted her basically and sold all of her stuff and left her just to her own devices, I'm going to say OP is not the jerk, but it is kind of a lot to take a whole house. What do you guys think? Is OP a jerk in this situation? Our next story is by FewZebra2391. Am I the jerk for asking my sister to be a groomswoman? I'm male, 25. My fiance, female, 24, has never gotten along with my sister, 18 year old female. My fiance has never liked how close I am with my sister, and it's been a cause of few arguments. I proposed to my fiance, Sarah, a few months ago, and things have been going smoothly. In fact, I would say our relationship has never been better. A few days ago, Sarah listed off to me all of the people she wanted as bridesmaids, and not surprisingly, my sister was not one of them. 
She said she was planning on asking them in a few more months to be in our wedding. Sarah then asked me if I knew who I wanted as groomsman. I listed off a couple of friends that Sarah knew, Keegan, Joe, Sammy, etc. And then I said I wanted my sister to be one of my groomsmen. This made Sarah upset. She said that it wasn't traditional for a woman to be a groomsman and that it would embarrass her. I explained to her that my sister was one of the most important people in my life and she was going to be a part of our wedding. This made Sarah even more upset and she accused me of trying to ruin her wedding day and she locked herself in the bathroom. It's been a few days since this and we haven't spoken at all. Many of her family members have reached out to me and asked me not to include my sister in the wedding at all and that Sarah should be the most important woman in my life, not my sister. My mother-in-law even called me telling me that I was making Sarah depressed and that I was a horrible person for doing this to my future wife. My sister heard about all of this and told me that it was okay to not invite her. I stood my ground and told all of them that my sister would be included no matter what. Am I the jerk for doing so? When you celebrate a wedding, it's two people coming together, right? So all of the people that are most important to both of those two people should be able to be included in this ritual. And frankly, to me, it's almost downright depressing that OP's fiancé cannot see the joy in having OP's sister as a groomsman. It might not be traditional, but to me, I see that as like an uplifting thing. Like they're so important and they're so willing to be there that they're going to go out of their way to be a part of the groomsmen crowd and break traditional norms to be a part of that. I think OP is not the jerk and I think it's really, really unfair that it seems like everybody on the fiancé side is trying to pressure OP into not even having a sister there. I think it goes without saying that OP is not the jerk. Our next story is by Delightful Capricorn. Am I the jerk for ignoring someone after she asked me to apologize after purposefully deceiving her over lunch? Last week, I had a group presentation and after we were done, my teammates and I decided to go out for lunch. Then one of them asked if one of her friends could come with us. We're all international students. So we're waiting for her friend, she shows up and we go to eat at this restaurant near campus. During lunch, she gets a call from her mom and she starts speaking on the phone in French. At first it was normal stuff, but then it became, these people brought me to this restaurant and I hate the food, this place isn't even nice, why did they come here, and these people are so boring, etc. I was very uncomfortable by the end of it. Afterwards I told my teammate, the girl's friend, about what was said. She was angry and apologized to me and told me this wasn't the first time something like this had happened. Apparently they usually speak to each other in Arabic but her friend switches to French if she wants to say something to someone that she doesn't want my teammate to know about. Later that night, I get a bunch of DM requests from my teammate's friend. She was like, it was rude of you to sit there and listen to my private conversation and you should have excused yourself and gone somewhere else. And then there was, you lied to me about where you're from. You made me think I could have a private conversation around you. Okay, so my dad's Korean and my mom is Swiss. We talked about this over lunch. She asked me what part of Switzerland my family's from. I said my mom's family's from Zurich. Because of this, she thought I could only speak German. This is how I lied about where I'm from. She told me she'll apologize about the things she said if I acknowledge that I've purposely deceived her as well. I just ignored her after that. I really don't see in any way how OP could be the jerk here at all. The teammate's friend is super entitled, a major jerk themselves. And frankly, short of an apology, they deserve to be ignored. In fact, I find them quite boring. Our next story is by Nefarious Safe 443 Am I the jerk for removing my maid of honor's tattoos via Photoshop in my wedding pictures? So I, 32-year-old female, got married two months ago to my husband, 35-year-old male. We had a beautiful wedding and my childhood BFF Jessica, 31-year-old female, was my maid of honor. I had a themed wedding. My husband and I are both historians, and we met because we were researching the same time period for our thesis, namely the 1800s in Great Britain, or popularly known as the Regency Era. The fact that we both researched the same time period was practically the reason why we started dating. So we instantly loved the idea of a themed wedding set in the Regency Era, as it was sentimental to us and a beautiful way to honor our beginnings. For my wedding, I personally paid for my wedding party's dresses and hair and makeup. 
Now, Jessica has tattoos on her hands, legs, torso, and neck. I brought up her tattoos and asked her what she would prefer to do with them to stay on theme. She said she wishes to do nothing, and while she understands the theme is important to my husband and I, she was not going to cover herself up in any way, as she didn't want to compromise herself. I was a little miffed, but I accepted this since it's a fair boundary, and so I didn't push it. Plus, gloves was an important part of the bridesmaid's attire, meaning most of her tattoos will be covered by the gloves itself, and it was really just the neck tattoos I was worried about, but the bridesmaid dresses had conservative necklines, so it wouldn't be very conspicuous, and so I thought I could just get over this and not to worry. However, on the day of the wedding, Jessica's gloves were small instead of the big ones I expected the bridesmaids to wear and her dress's neckline did nothing to cover her tattoos as she had altered it last minute. I did not expect this and was kind of thrown off, but after a while I stopped caring and was busy having the best day of my life. However, fast forward to a few weeks ago, I got back the first set of pictures for my wedding day and the pics with Jessica in them were jarring to say the least because of her tattoos. It was honestly so out of place since I had asked my photographer to edit the pics to give them a historic portrait-like look. I wanted a particular pic of my husband and I, our families, plus the maid of honor and best man framed. But if anyone saw that pic, the first thing they would have noticed was Jessica's tattoos, and not my husband and I. I really wanted this one particular picture to look like an actual portrait drawn in 1810. So I went ahead and asked the photographer to digitally remove the tattoos. The post Photoshop pic came in the mail yesterday and I showed it to Jessica. I knew she would get annoyed with this and I was ready to apologize sincerely but also to let her know that I won't be returning the picture. Jessica was very, very mad when she saw the pic and told me this was a narcissistic and disrespectful thing to do and stormed out of my house. She was more mad than I ever expected her to be. So now I'm not sure if I was truly way out of line or just a little bit selfish. So am I the jerk? This is one of those stories where the basic premise is almost always going to leave OP being the jerk up until it turned out that Jessica went and wore shorter gloves and altered the dress and just completely changed up the outfit you expected them to wear which would have mitigated almost all of the issue. It probably also depends on the usage of the photo like having a personal framed photo on the wall where it's touched up to fit that period piece look. I feel like you can understand that regardless. Now, if it was something that you went and shared around on social media and put it on your Instagram where the photoshopped copy is there, then you get a little bit more towards the jerk area because you're broadcasting this person's identity completely digitally changed. But overall, not the jerk. This next story is by Christy Fangle. Am I the jerk for refusing to give up my place for my sister's wedding picture? Background, I, female, 17, am what most people would call unattractive. I've inherited the worst physical traits from both parents. My first cousin, female, 23, on the other hand, won as far as the genetic lottery goes and is good looking enough to be a model. I was my sister's maid of honor and I was supposed to stand beside her for all the wedding pictures. Our cousin, who was a bridesmaid, was not going to be present for all the pictures. When the photographer announced that he was starting to take the group pictures, my aunt, cousin's mom, pulled me aside to kindly tell me that it would look better if my cousin stood beside the bride, as she would enhance the scene. I refused as I was the maid of honor and the bride's sister. My aunt became angry and told me I was creating a scene. My sister looked uncomfortable but didn't say anything. My mom told me to adjust as it was just a matter of some pictures while my dad said that I shouldn't have to change my place. I stood my ground and refused to move for the pictures, which left my aunt and cousin disgruntled. My mom was furious as she said that I'd ruin the pictures because everyone was feeling uncomfortable at the end. My mom and dad are arguing at the moment. Am I the jerk? OP's definitely not the jerk and for multiple reasons. First of all, that's just a horrid thing for the aunt to say, basically saying, well you're not as beautiful as my daughter so switch places with her. And then also, OP being the maid of honor deserves to be next to the bride in a group photo. That just makes sense. And it's their sister. This next story is by Squirrel342. 
Am I the jerk for sitting at the kids' table during dinner and making a snide remark about how the men in my family would have been better people if they'd have been babied? Whenever my in-laws host dinner, the kids have dinner in one room and the adults in a different room. I have a three-year-old son who doesn't eat properly unless you're keeping an eye on him, so I didn't want him to eat where I couldn't see him to make sure he ate enough, which is why I sat with the kids. I didn't think it would be a big deal, but apparently my father-in-law and father both thought it was super disrespectful and sent my sister-in-law to call me twice. The second time, my sister-in-law asked me to come and speak to them, otherwise they would just send her back, so I did. The conversation was just them telling me I was babying my son and that he needed to gain some independence and become a man, but he wouldn't if I was so bent on babying him all the time. I was annoyed because of what they said and the fact that they were telling me off in front of everyone like I was a child. So I made a snide remark about how the men in the family could have used some babying as children and it would have made them better people. At this point, my husband got involved and told me to just sit down. I did end up sitting down, but I was quiet the entire time and was only answering with yes or no when someone spoke directly to me. My husband pulled me aside after and said I was being very combative for no reason and that our son had been fine in the other room alone and I hadn't needed to cause a scene. He suggested I try to smooth things over with everyone, but I refused to since I was still angry, which made him upset with me. I think OP's not the jerk in this situation. Looking out for your three-year-old kid and trying to make sure they ate enough is not a bad thing. And clearly OP wasn't doing it to be malicious or disrespectful to anybody else. So OP literally cannot be the jerk for everything else that happened in the story as a result. Was it maybe a little petty to be combative and give only yes or no answers? Yeah, but like, it feels kind of justified. Imagine having a family dinner and the two dads pull you aside, have you stand there and start just talking you down about how ridiculous you're being and how your kid needs to man up and how you're going to, I don't know, give them troubles or something. This next story is by Relative Feed 6048 Am I the jerk for not making vegetarian food for my daughter? Hi. I have two daughters, Danny, 17, and Mia, 10. Mia has celiac disease and obviously can't eat gluten, so we're very careful about cross-contamination and things like that. Recently, Danny has decided to be a vegetarian, which is awesome for her, and I'm so happy that she's making these choices for herself. I've told Danny that I'm happy to buy all the food she wants, but I think she should be responsible for cooking her own meals now. Danny isn't willing to do this, and Mia, my husband, and I aren't willing to be completely vegetarian. I offer to not put meat in her portions of whatever I cook, but she's found a vegetarian cookbook that she likes and wants me to make meals just for her out of that. She says that I'm being unfair because I cater to Mia's dietary needs, but Mia has an actual allergy and is 10. Danny has made a choice. She's been living off biscuits for the last three days and claiming that I'm starving her, even though I've made meat-free portions of whatever we've eaten, even added tofu and alternate protein to her meals. But she says she wants these really specific vegetarian meals that also have gluten in them, so it's not like I can make a big batch for the family. She says I'm the jerk for starving her and not supporting her choices. Am I the jerk? Being 17 years old, they're old enough to make that kind of decision, but if they're going to make that decision, they can't expect other people to prepare all of that food custom for her, and it's also unrealistic to expect your entire family to just transition over to being vegetarian full-time with you. I think OP is definitely not the jerk. And our final story of the day is by Burn Car Jaxi. Am I the jerk? Wife wants to send daughter to Vietnam. So am I the jerk for saying to my wife, she can't send our daughter to Vietnam for a year? Context, my wife is Vietnamese and I'm British. We live in the UK and our daughter is two years and 10 months old. Wife's father, my father-in-law, is dying of cancer and he's already outlived the maximum time the doctors gave him. He hasn't asked, but wife wants him to spend some time with our daughter before he passes. Only one problem, he lives in Vietnam a cool 16 hour flight away from where we live and almost as far away from us as you can get on the planet. I've already said that I'd be happy for this to happen when she's older, like seven or eight maybe, but not right now. 
and certainly not for a whole year. She only speaks to them through the phone, and the last time she saw any of them face to face, she was only six months old, so she doesn't remember. I know my daughter, and she would be terrified in a country she doesn't know the language of, and surrounded by people she half recognizes. I feel bad for my wife and father-in-law, but I won't allow my daughter to be sent to the other side of the world at this age without either of us living there as well. Wife and I had a big argument about this, and I told her dead straight that if she does that without me knowing, I will call the police and Interpol on her. So, am I the jerk? I think OP's definitely not the jerk, it's just way too weird to send your two-year-old daughter all the way across the world for a year to live with a man that, with all sincerity, you're unsure how long they may be around. For somebody in the father-in-law situation, a year can be a long time. What happens six months in if suddenly he just plummets in health? What would be your contingency plan to get your three-year-old daughter shipped back to the UK from Vietnam? It's just way too much. What do you guys think? Could this work in any way? Let me know in the comments. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. So of all these stories I've read today, which is your favorite and why? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you haven't yet, if you could like and subscribe, that would mean a lot to me. Whatever you do, whether it's liking, subscribing, turning notifications on, all of it helps grow this channel and I appreciate the heck out of it. So until next time, I'll see you all tomorrow with some more stories.